Today, we're going to be looking at the late init modifier in Kotlin. Okay, so to start off, we're going to ask three simple questions and then dive into really how to use the late init modifier. So the first question is, what is the late init modifier used for? And what it lets us do is define a non-null value without a non-null initializer for that value. This lets us to defer the initialization of that non-null type until a later time. Now, why is this useful? Well, this is useful in cases where it's not convenient to provide a non-null initializer at the time that we declare the variable. So this could be cases where we are using dependency injection, where maybe we have to wait to actually assign the value until a later point in our life cycle. Or maybe it's something like a test where we have a setup method and we know that once setup is called that we will have a non-null value available. So this is where latent comes in. It lets us tell the compiler that we will ensure that this value is non-null before it's actually used. Now let's take a look at how we can actually use this in a couple of examples. So here we have an example of a main activity class in an Android project. And we'll see here we have a lifecycle method called onCreate. And within onCreate, we're performing some dependency injection, in this case using Dagger2. So we know that once this method is called, that we will have access to a non-null main view model. So because of that, we've defined this as a non-null variable. However, if I hover over this, I see that it's complaining, saying property must be initialized or be abstract. Well, if we want to change this, we can add latent it. Now it actually allows us to define this non-null type without actually having to initialize that value right here. If we were to then use that value, let's say in the onResume method, we would be able to do that without any issue. However, if we skipped this injection and we tried to access view model in onResume, it would throw an exception saying that this value has not yet been initialized. Now another example would be in a test class. So again here in this test, we have this setup method that says every time setup is called, we're going to create a new main view model and assign it to our property. Now for testing, this is common practice because we want to ensure that we have a, a clean model class to work with before every test. And we also want to make sure that this view model can be a non-null type so that we don't have to deal with null checks are over, all over in our code. So once again, we've defined our property as a non-null view model here, but again, the compiler is complaining that it must be initialized or be abstract. Well, once again, we can add late init to this, and now we can defer the initialization of this value until the setup method and then when we use the view model in other places in this class, we don't have to worry about our null checks. So we've taken a look at a couple examples of the basic usage of latent it. That is within a property within the class body of our Kotlin code. Now let's look at a couple other places where we can use the latent it modifier. So here's an example of our main view model class. And we've followed the pattern that we've seen in the other examples. We have a property defined as a late init var. And then down here, we have this init function where we're actually assigning that value. So what would happen if we tried to define this in the constructor instead? So if we move that up here into the constructor, we actually will get an error saying late init modifier not allowed on primary constructor parameters. So this is one limitation of using late init in Kotlin, that it can't be used actually in the 
the properties within the constructor of our class. So in that case, we will have to leave it here within the class body. So there's actually two other cases where we can use late init as well, both of them only since Kotlin 1.2. So if you're using an older version, this won't apply. But in newer versions of Kotlin, we can actually define latent variables both as top level properties and as local variables. So we can define a top level property here, latent var sum top level value string. And we would now be free to define this value at a later date if we needed to. And similarly, within a function, we could say latent var some local value. Oops. And once again, the compiler is fine with this. So maybe this would be useful in a case where we're not always going to use this value, but we have a certain logical branch in which it's going to be created. So we could defer this value and ensure that we don't have to handle null checks as long as we make sure that that is only used within that correct logical scope. So that's a quick overview of latent init modifier within Kotlin. It lets us defer the initialization of our non-null types in cases where it's not convenient to assign them at the declaration site. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this useful, hit the like button. And if you want to stay up to date and learn more about Kotlin, you can check out the rest of the Learning Kotlin playlist on my channel and hit the subscribe button. Until next time.